Welcome to the Bentley Systems training class where you will learn how to design connections in RAM Connection Standalone. For this particular video, we're going to be assigning a beam splice connection for a beam splice that has square hollow structural sections and also has a moment imposed on it. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the joint data before we proceed with the connection design. In the joint dialog, we're going to notice that the same section size, a square hollow structural section, has been assigned to both the left and the right beam for this beam splice detail. In addition to that, if we were to take a look at the loads area, we would notice that a shear and a moment load was imposed upon this joint. Let's go ahead and assign a beam splice to this currently selected joint. To do that, let's go to the Design tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. In the Connection Assignment dialog, you're going to notice that your filters are already set to the current type of joint that you have selected, and in this case, that's a beam splice. Now, we know that our joint is for square or rectangular hollow structural sections, and there is a moment imposed upon it. So we're going to go ahead and select the end plate beam splice rectangular moment template. Once we select your template, go ahead and click on the assign icon and RAM connection will run through the connection assignment. The first thing I'm going to do after assigning a connection to the currently selected joint is take a look in the joint selection area at the bottom of my screen. Here, I'll be able to see the interaction ratio along with the controlling load combination. And this will be color-coded to indicate the status of the connection design. Here, I'll be able to see that the interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered during the connection design process. If we want to take a closer look at this connection design, let's go ahead and enter the connection pad. To do that, you're going to select the Design tab in your Ribbon Toolbar, click on the Edit icon, and then edit your combined connection. Here we're going to be able to see a variety of parameters that we can go ahead and customize in the connection pad. And the first area I want to point your attention to is Design as a Moment End Plate option. Now when we selected the Moment type of connection template, this checkbox will be selected by default. If this checkbox were unselected, it would mean that this beam splice would be capable of resisting axial load, but not moment. Again, when you select your appropriate template, this checkbox will be selected automatically. Let's go ahead and also scroll on down, and we can see that we can modify several parameters for the end plate, including the thickness of the plate, the material properties, the welding and bolting information. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this plate in isometrical view. Now what I'm noticing for the detailing of this plate is I would like to see this plate go past the edges of my beams that are defined in my beam splice joint. Now I could do that a couple different ways with the options available here. Here I can see that automatically by default it's going to detail the bolt configuration with four bolts. I also have the option to change to eight bolts, which would lengthen that plate and would give me bolts along the entire perimeter. Now, if I didn't want to do that, if I wanted to stick with four bolts, to widen this plate, I can always uh, extend the horizontal pitch or the distance between the bolts. Let's say we wanted to go to six inches instead of three inches. Here you could see that would widen our plate and allow us to make a nice weld on the other side of that plate system. Now at this point, all the other parameters look good for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep the detailing this way. Now before I exit out of the connection pad, let's go ahead and take a look at the connection report. Now in the connection report, you're gonna notice that we have indexed the contents of the report, which will allow you to jump to different sections conveniently. Let's go ahead and scroll on down, and we're going to notice all the geometric considerations and design checks were performed. 
For the geometric considerations, we can notice that we've passed all of these checks, which means that a warning was not produced during our connection assignment. In addition to that, we'll go ahead and take a look at the design check information. And we're gonna notice that the global critical strength ratio will be reported. These ratios will be color coded to indicate their status. Now, if you'd like some additional information regarding the calculations that were performed to arrive at these results, we can click on the view formulas icon. Here we'll be able to see all the checks that were performed, the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Let's go ahead and close out the report. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is check the DXF view. Now by selecting the DXF option, I'd be able to see what the DXF would look like for this connection detailing as it stands right now. This DXF can be customized and exported as needed. Now if you make any changes within the connection pad, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go ahead and save this detailing before you close. I went ahead and did that, and I'm going to close out of the connection pad, and I should be able to see that the joint has been updated in the joint selection area. At this point, this concludes our process for designing a beam splice with hollow structural sections with a moment imposed upon it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.